Hey, it's Mike here, and today my response to Neil deGrasse Tyson's views on the value of different animal species. He had a good conversation about it on his channel. I just want to riff on plants and animals. But I simply disagree with most of the conclusions that he came to. I think he had some good points commentary on the general views of animals and the paradoxes that we have when we value one versus the other. But then of course he goes and, and pulls out cards like, I am thankful to the pig, therefore it's okay to eat that animal. Or I think all life is valuable, so I might as well eat highly sentient animals. Anyway, you kind of get my drift where I'm going and so I need to respond. I have to do it, let's go. His video is a conversation he has with his friend under Star Talk, his series on his YouTube channel. The video is called Neil deGrasse Tyson Explains Species Bias. For those that don't know, Neil deGrasse Tyson is a astrophysicist, very popular dude. He does make very interesting points in the realm of space and on and on, and it's always nice to have more people speaking about science out there. However, his conclusions when it comes to diet and eating animals have continued to bother me. But either way, in this video, he spends the first several minutes talking about why we ascribe value to certain animals and not other ones. Here he is. The fact that we're protecting the dolphins but eating the tuna, I remember thinking to myself, why doesn't anybody care about the tuna, right? It's, it's also a big fish, all right? It, it had a life in the ocean. And so I realized that we have species bias among us. He calls this species bias, which yes, that's true, but you might know it under a different term, and that is carnism, why we eat pigs, love dogs, and on and on, coined by Melanie Joy, Harvard psychologist. I don't want to admit what you're saying is true. I, and we don't I, want to admit it. I, I, well, don't, I don't want to admit it, but... We, we don't like to admit it, yeah, but, but it's there. I just want to right. reveal this in case people hadn't thought it through. And that's absolutely true. We don't like to admit it, but there's one thing of admitting it and another thing of actually changing your habits, perhaps diet or lifestyle, based off realizing this. So has Neil acted on it in terms of his diet or whatever? Well, this brings me to the, again, frustrating paradox of views that he expresses and then his habits, especially dietary. And you can look around and see, you know, perhaps PETA praising him for, quote, when it comes to promoting kindness to animals, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson has his feet on the ground. Yes, he generally empathizes with animals, but again, then he eats them. So on one hand, he says things like, I respect all life. But then on the other hand, he refers to cows as machines that turn grass into meat. And of course, eats meat, which is the most interesting fact here. All right, let's hop right into some of his points. Here he is again on dolphins versus tuna. All right, so we're saying we value the dolphin over the, no, we're not talking about vegetarians here who would eat neither, but for those who would eat the, the, the tuna. tuna and specifically not eat the dolphin, because it's a mammal. So we are saying you are close enough to us that we value your life above other life on this tree of life. On the mammal thing, I think it's fair to say that humans are able to communicate with other mammals more easily. They identify with their behavior and gestures and so on, and therefore more easily empathize with them. But, but as he says in a bit, it probably isn't the mammal thing for most people. And it's pretty obviously not a valid cutoff in my book. I think fish are highly sentient and valuable and uh, can feel pain. So go ahead and watch Seaspiracy. It's a good one, hashtag Seaspiracy. But yeah, of course, an animal like a tuna just doesn't have the same ability to communicate with us is very different from us. And I agree, that's why we probably care about tuna less. Anyway, he continues. And some people said, no, it's not that they're mammals, it's that they have big brains. Their brain right, is larger than us. A okay, so now say we're that. saying, now we're saying, we value them because they have big brains. Well, I think intelligence is a factor. The problem is we just don't consistently observe that idea. I mean, we have a lot of little tiny dogs that are inbred and really, really dumb. Sorry to them and wolves for doing that to you wolves. Uh, <laughs> but we don't eat them and nobody even considers eating them. There's probably some freaky guy out there that does, but we don't, we don't need to consider that dude. But I do need to mention that several cultures do eat dolphins and really just a large motivator for us to not eat dolphins is that they have really high mercury levels. Like tuna is pretty dang high. 
But then since dolphins live longer, it gets even higher. That's a major factor looking around the world. But yes, I do agree that many people just value them because they are highly intelligent, and I do not view that as a valid or even well-observed line for food versus not food across the world. And really, most people are just running on cultural inertia, what their parents and what people around them eat, and they don't give this conversation much thought, so I'm happy that it's happening at all. But either way, it always seems to come back to plants, though, or something like that. So, you will not kill an animal to eat it, but you will slaughter all manner of plant life and eat it. So you're okay with that, but not eating the animals. You have judged that your side of the tree of life is more important than this other side of the tree of life. The point there is that they do not have a central nervous system and they do not have an evolutionary reason to feel pain and run away to survive. And there doesn't seem to be a strong case for that occurring. Yes, they have chemical responses. Those are not equal to suffering. But if you have to pin eating from the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom up against each other, it's pretty clear to me that you're gonna cause less suffering by eating plants. For me, it comes down to one factor more than any other factor, and that is sentience or the ability for that being to perceive and suffer. And that is a little bit of a spectrum, and that is why I bring that all the way down to include animals that may or may not actually suffer to a meaningful degree. Why eat them? I do not need to. It's that simple. As with most people here, I do not think he's put a lot of thought into a general rule of our food system, and that is that the animals that we eat, eat plants. They eat a lot of plants. A lot of that is lost to the feed conversion ratio. And because of that, choosing to eat animals results in the destruction that harm to more plants than if you were to eat plants directly. So even if you equally value plant life and animal life, the logical thing to do is to eat plants directly. Oh wait, he actually claims to equally value those? So I, I just think of all life as sacred. Having After having done so, I don't value judge one life over another based on its proximity to us. Why not eat humans then? Why don't you eat humans, Neil? Well, if I had to guess, you actually do value different species differently, and you're just kind of, as we'll get into it, using this as a cop-out to eat meat. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but why don't you want to eat humans, Neil? Is it because they're really close to how you are, who you are? Or is it because they are more intelligent? All of these things that you're sort of calling people out for using to create species bias? But let's play the game. Let's say that he actually does value all life equally well. There's a simple equation here, and that is that animals are the most damaging food source for all of life on the planet. If you are looking to species extinction, according to this study, eating animals is likely the leading cause of species extinction. Eating animals is also the leading cause of Amazon destruction, of dead zone creation, and is a ridiculously huge, disproportionately large land use method thing. From the USDA, we use roughly half of our lower 48 land in the US to graze and grow feed for livestock. I would go as far as to say that no single personal choice harms all life on the planet more than choosing to eat animals. But I wanna challenge the notion that Neil actually values all life equally regardless of how close to him it is. And that brings me to a little bit of a thought experiment. You take Neil and you say, you have to choose A or B a is a lettuce plant a head of lettuce in a guillotine and b is a cow in a guillotine and he has to choose either a lettuce or b cow he has to kill one otherwise perhaps he dies or whatever he just has to i would bet a lot of money based off complete assumption that neil would choose to cut the head of lettuce and not decapitate the cow i'm just gonna go ahead and throw it out there in other words, I'm calling his bluff. I do think that he has a value system for animals versus plants. And really, that is a microcosm of the choice that you are making with every meal in terms of whether eating plants or animals. But if I were to coin what he professes here, I would call it species blindness. And I think there are many issues with this, and a parallel would be saying that you don't see race, that you're race blind. A lot of people have a major problem with that because it 
means that you are going to ignore any of the unique challenges of a given race. And the result is you might ignore the large degree of suffering of highly sentient animals because you're putting them on par with bacteria saying, there's nothing we could do about that anyway. And then pretty soon you're paying people money to raise animals in a factory farm. And Neil probably says he's against factory farming, but does he, you know, pay money at restaurants to eat factory farm meat? I assume he does. Keep in mind, we're kind of stuck killing in order to survive. He says we're just stuck killing to survive. And I think this is, again, part of that same appeal to futility where you're saying, oh, you know, since death has to happen, I might as well just really not even worry about it. Now, I don't want to put words in his mouth here or straw man any of his positions, but to me, it seems like it is, it's an excuse to not focus on all of the suffering that is going on with highly sentient animals and instead just say, you know, we have to kill might as well eat the highly sentient pig, for example, and then completely ignore the alternative of all of these plants that have a really low animal suffering count or death count. I mean, for example, when we are harvesting grain, it's dried up and dead anyway, and I could go on and on about these studies tracking mice during harvesting. That's for another time. I've talked about it in the past. But even just looking to something like fruit trees, literally just shaking the fruit off the tree, if you really care about lowering suffering that much, you would be at least trying to eat something like that versus a pig. And speaking of pigs. When I when I eat lettuce or cucumber, I'm thinking, uh, you know, like as they say with the Native Americans, I, I'm thankful to the plant. And he, in the same way, I'm thankful to the pig or the cow or the, you know, whatever else. These are things that were alive. Oh, in that case, Neil, you're welcome. You're welcome for eating my body that I was raised and killed for. It's completely fine. You know, just because you said thank you, before you said thank you, I was a little worried. But the thank you really pushed me over the edge, so it's cool. You can eat me anytime, man. Yeah, just, just eat my body. Here's my arm. No, the pig does not care how thankful you are at all. The pig wants to live. And this makes me think, what if this was applied in any scenario with humans? You can start to see how ridiculous it is. I mean, imagine it's like, breaking news, Hannibal Lecter let off for cannibalism because he expressed gratitude for the humans that he ate. That would never fly. Yes, I just compared Neil deGrasse Tyson to a cannibal. That's when you know it's, it's probably time to wrap up the video. I'm just joking. Comparing, not equating. Anyway, in the end, it just lands a little wrong when somebody has a video talking about species bias and how we're so wrong through society to be valuing certain animals over others based on arbitrary things. But then just, just saying F it. The video should actually be titled Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about species bias for a bit and then just justifies his consumption of highly sentient animals for the rest of the video. Finally, if he values all life, I assume he values his life. And I think there's a very strong argument for why you should be giving up animals and their products out of selfish health needs in terms of heart health all the way to, based off our recent BMJ study, you no know, 73% lower risk of moderate to severe COVID in people who were deemed plant-based, which was even a loose term there. So come on. All right, let me know down below what you think about all this. Are there any sort of logical inconsistencies that I missed? What are your thoughts in general? And as usual, feel free to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Squeaky squeaker. <laughs>